what's, what's happening, happening fandoms? fandoms welcome back to the channel if you're new here we react to music videos and shows we're going back to oh, yes. new rock stars eric boss we're breaking down ahsoka episode five if you saw that episode oh my you gosh. know there is some tea to spill oh, my on goodness. what is happening here and i can't wait to get the behind the scenes look that eric's going to give us let's go it's like one of the best best episodes episode of television ever. i've seen in a long time there we go to new rock stars i'm eric voss and this is a breakdown of ahsoka episode 5 shadow warrior a love letter to clone wars with hayden christensen as a clone wars era anakin skywalker and young ahsoka tano played by ariana greenblatt aka oh. young gamora in avengers infinity war but oh. who exactly was our shadow warrior this episode was it the living force embodying ahsoka's old master or the dark side of darth vader finishing the malachor fight in the world between worlds or something even cooler i'm gonna break down all the Clone Wars callbacks and other interesting production details that you might have missed from the music and the sound design to amazing attention to detail in the lightsaber choreography of this episode. And yeah, folks, I did it again. It's like 2 a.m. Pacific time as I record <laughs> this after spending eight hours writing this analysis. What am I wow. doing? But you know what? I approach these breakdowns as a labor of love, not just as like, I don't a review see puppy or a reaction eyes. or a list of Star Wars He doesn't have or puppy or eyes. It takes to make you feel like less of a Star Wars fan. I do this because I am so grateful to Dave Filoni and all the cast and crew for giving us these great stories and I just want to celebrate the craftsmanship that they put into this and I'm grateful to you for letting this channel be part of your Ahsoka experience. So thank you, thank you, thank you and let's dive in. Okay, we open as always with yeah. the Lucasfilm sequence of Vader, 3PO, Clone Trooper Helmet, HK Assassin Droid, Maroc, Hu Yang, Stormtrooper, Chopper, and Sabine's Helmet and finally this episode pays off us spotting that Clone Trooper Helmet as this episode gives us two cameos of Clone Trooper Rex, both when he was a captain during the Clone Wars season one era on Ryloth, and when he was a commander of the 332nd uh, Company in the Siege of Mandalore in Clone Wars season seven. But really just take a moment to appreciate the music here. Closed captioning calls this soft ethereal music. Composer yeah. Kevin Kiner tweeted that the music of this episode would be special with a video of his kid Deanna Kiner on flute. They were co-credited with Kevin and Ludwig Jorgensen and Noah Gorlick for writing that sick Igya Ka track from episode one. And in this intro, uh. we're really hearing the purr of the flute mixed with the singing bursts of the flute, like Ahsoka's patient current age trying to reconcile with her impatient youth. We begin this episode on CTOS and we get this close up of the pedestal that held the spear where Morgan Elspeth summoned the Green Knight Sister Flames. We see how this pedestal is forked, kind of like the shape of Vader's tower on mm. Mustafar. And we see the split halves of that spear and gears and cogs now exposed. It really was simple old school machinery, Rubik's Cubable by any art history nerd that this device was meant to open up to. And Morgan Elspeth cheated by using witchcraft to jailbreak it. They violated the <laughs> intent of whoever the ancient Star Wars Archimedes was who engineered this Antikythera. Jason, we pointed out last week, wears his father, Kanan Jarrus's pauldron, on his shoulder with that ah. great pearl sigil that Kanan shared with the Doom Wolf on Lothal and Rebels. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a photograph of Kanan Jarrus pinned to Hera's dashboard. And it's hard to tell, but it does kind of look like they might have used Freddie Prince Jr. as a model <laughs> for it. He's the actor who voiced Kanan on Rebels. Ah. And since Jason plays such an important role this episode of sensing the lightsaber combat through the world between worlds, they actually tease Jason's lightsaber hearing in this moment as we actually hear a lightsaber hum in the sound mix right before Jason pops his head out from behind Chopper. Hu Yang laments, I told them to stay together. Yeah. But they never listened. They never listen. Yes, David Tennant voices this to be so mournful, and his poor droid eyes just droop sorrowfully. It was You're he right. in episode four who begged them to stay together, and it was only because Ahsoka did not see Sabine and assumed that she died that led to both of their failures. And yes, Hu Yang repeats, they never listen, and you mm -hmm. kind of feel like he's talking about all of the Jedi. Yeah, Jedi. that's like all exactly the how I he felt. He guided their kyber crystals and instructed how to build their hilts, eventually grew up into these stubborn warriors who got involved in political wars and distrusted, deceived, and destroyed each other. Indeed, they never listen. So from here, we cut to this episode's title reveal, Shadow Warrior. And yes, we feel like Hu Yang is talking about the most infamous node in this legacy of wayward Jedi who never listen, Anakin Skywalker. But it's not just Anakin. There's a cool, deeper meaning to this that I'll discuss at the end of the video. We oh. rejoin yeah. Anakin and Ahsoka in the world between worlds. Now, I've explained this cosmic dimension in a number of videos, most recently this one that actually goes into Dave Filoni's actual intention mm -hmm. and proves why, you know, at the end of the day, 
it's probably not best to get too carried away with the deep cut fan theories about the gods of Mortis and whatnot when it comes to this kind of thing, because really this is Ahsoka's subjective experience. It's about her dealing yep. with what she brought into this place. Meanwhile, for a fuller context of really everything you need to know from Rebels, please check out our four-part Rebels recap series. Very, very informational and helpful. So I Dave wish Lorne we could, but we're going to watch that show. Was Queen Tran, who frames every shot That's Sam Riegel's wife. Composition. Like as we huh? cut to Anakin's view of Ahsoka, notice the path behind her curves off to the left, but when we see Ahsoka's view of Anakin, his path ends. Right. It yeah. just kind of ends in a cul-de-sac there. Ahsoka took some turns to get here, but to follow Anakin down his path would lead to the end of the road. So the two greet each other. You look the same. You look old. <laughs> you look old. <laughs> well, that happens. Yes, they de-aged Hayden Christensen so that he would look the most like her memory of him from right before Revenge of the Sith. But Anakin comments on Ahsoka's older appearance because, yeah, she's played by Rosario Dawson and, yeah, the character would be like 50 now, aging older than he was in Revenge of the Sith. And now, five or so years after Return of the Jedi, might be getting closer to his age at his time of death. Even in Ahsoka's various eras of animation between Clone Wars and Rebels, she goes through a dramatic physical change into adulthood. Anakin yeah. says, I'm here to finish your training. It's a little late for that. One is never too old to learn, Snips. Remember, in episode one of the series, Ahsoka told Hera that Anakin never completed her training. He yeah. had spent years as her master during Clone Wars seasons one through five, but Ahsoka abruptly left the Jedi Order at the end of season five. And in Rebels season two, episode 18, Ahsoka watches an old recording that Anakin had made for her as he taught her form four lightsaber combat. So Ahsoka has mm. truly longed for closure with her mentor. And Anakin explains the point of this final lesson. Live. Yeah. Or die. Or die. This episode teaches us that living or dying isn't really a question of lightsaber skills. It's letting go of what you fear to lose. Mm -hmm. One of the things we heard in the Rebels World Between World episode was Yoda to Anakin from Revenge of the Sith. Rejoice for those around you who transform into the Force. Attachment leads to jealousy. Train yourself to let go mm. of everything you fear to lose. And now mm. Ahsoka's most afraid to lose Sabine, and that is what's holding her back, because it's a lesson that Anakin never really could have taught her. But yeah. here, Ahsoka says, I won't fight you. I've heard that, I heard before. that before. This is a fascinating response from Anakin, because it sounds like it's referring to when Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi says this to Vader as he tosses his saber. I will not fight you, Father. Which would mean that uh, this Anakin would have the memory of being Darth Vader and dueling his yeah. son in the Battle of Endor, something that Ahsoka probably wouldn't know about unless she and Luke chatted about it, you know, when they were crashing Boba Fett's miniseries. It could also refer to when <laughs> Ahsoka faced Vader on Malachor in the Rebels Season 2 finale. Initially, she said that she wouldn't leave Anakin, but then she swore to avenge Anakin. Revenge is not the Jedi way. I am no Jedi. Either way, this is not a friendly Ugh. sparring match between Master and Apprentice. No. This is really a rematch between Ahsoka and Vader. It's meant to provide closure for that conflict. And Anakin doesn't hold back. His aggressive lunges are just like his combat style against Obi-Wan on Mustafar. And at one point, he stabs his saber directly forward, which is Palpatine's favorite move. Actually, I want to give a compliment to K. Renick on last week's breakdown for pointing out how Ahsoka's stance while fighting Maroke in episode four was the same as Palpatine's in Revenge of the Sith. Amazing. You know that Right. And thank you to everyone who writes these kind of wow. comments. It really means a lot to be able to engage with you all in the comments with this kind of great conversation. So Hera searches wow. for Ahsoka using the same bulky scanner with the antenna that Han Solo used to search for Luke on Hoth in The Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, Carson look Tata at comes that. In and says, Senator Organa says she can only give us cover for so long. <gasps> He's talking about Leia Organa. I freaking oh, love I that, that Leia knows Hera and knows Carson, and she's just helping them sneak around like this. This, of course, is going to be part of Leia's ongoing campaign to form a resistance fleet outside of the New Republic government oversight. Though at this point, she's still a senator. At some point in the future, she's going to be run out of office once the broader public knows that her father was Darth Vader. This is something that gets explored in Claudia Gray's bloodline mm. novel. Now, Jason says he senses something in the water. He and Hera turn to Chopper, who chimes in. Yeah, it's just one of my favorite dumb things to try to decode what Dave Filoni <laughs> utters as Chopper for all these moments in here. I'm pretty sure he says, well, I got nothing. But Hera closes her eyes and she listens with her son. The lightsabers. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, they mix in John Williams' Force theme here. Mm. All season long, Kevin Kiner has flirted with Williams' themes with light motifs, but he just alters little things about them, but here he leans hard into it. Jason is able to hear this from the world between worlds, telling us that it's not just Ahsoka's delusion down there, it is a real realm that she is visiting, and that everyone with a Force connection is able to tap into it. And a reminder that the yeah. rooms at the edge of the Stonehenge platform are the language that we began to decode in our closing credits map translation video. Definitely a good watch. These runes translate to 2100, which I think might just be a distance to Peridia. Not really sure, but I absolutely mm. love Paul Sun Hyung Lee's delivery here. Jason has abilities. His father, Kanan Jarrus, was a Jedi. Okay. Yeah, just a reminder that most people in this universe think the Force is really silly and okay. really spooky. Okay, so back to Anakin and Ahsoka's duel. Anakin twirls his lightsaber. This is the same move that he and Obi-Wan did to mirror off each other in the Mustafar room where Anakin had killed all the Separatist leaders. You remember that moment? Dang, went, so fast. And then Anakin does another Palpatine stab, but Ahsoka repels it by doing the same behind the back block pose that we often saw Anakin doing during the prequel era. And that familiarity is what seems to catch him off guard because he allows Ahsoka to get a solid kick on him. But yeah. what yeah. so right in the noggin. Anakin's aggression forced her down his end of the path to that dead end cul-de-sac I pointed out earlier. That is all he wanted to do here, to just lead Ahsoka to this dead end so that he could move on to the next phase of his lesson. I haven't taught you everything yet. So he slices the path to break the floor beneath the yeah. surface feet, kind of like the Balrog breaking Gandalf's path mm. and causing oh, him to wow. fall through the floor. But it's also kind of like the way Vader fell through the floor during their duel on Malachi in Rebels, right when Ahsoka got pulled through into the world between worlds. So Ahsoka tumbles down this rabbit hole through these pink clouds and lands Great on some into terrain, a memory. But now she is younger. Ariana Greenblatt, yes, young Gabor from Infinity War and a number of other roles like she was in Barbie this year, playing the youth wow. version of Snips that we got to know in the early seasons of Clone Wars. This casting hmm. is so good. Greenblatt is perfect in this role. We see clone troopers running past her, some of them with the blue lined armor and the long right. rifles, and we see a younger version of Anakin. Forward! Hurry up, Snips! Young Ahsoka is back to wearing her Hurry headband up, and the beaded headdress that goes down the back of her Laku that Ahsoka had an original teenage character design, though luckily they don't have the goofy character design that like shows her midriff. But we also see that she has her original lightsaber, which had a green kyber crystal. And then Anakin, yeah. Hayden Christensen, actually looks pretty good here. He has the same haircut and the Jedi armor that the animators made for him in the Clone Wars series. And in the hmm. background of that fog of war, you can see a Republic ATTE or AT Walker, which would eventually evolve into the Imperial. At at or at at. We also see an LAAT transport Ooh. or lat transport gunship, which was first introduced in Attack of the Clones. We're back in the Clone Wars and it's live action. I can't believe we're seeing this. But yes, this is not a flashback because Ahsoka still has her adult mind. She's kind of reliving the yeah. memory. This right. is the Clone Wars. Yeah, no kidding. This was one of our first missions. Now they are on the planet of Ryloth. Mm. I'm basing this on the Twi'leks that we see in the background in the aftermath of the battle. This is likely the Ryloth arc at the end of season one of Clone Wars. Episode 19, Storm of Ryloth. Episode mm. 20, Innocence of Ryloth. And episode 21, Liberty of Ryloth. In episode 19, Anakin and Ahsoka lead some clone troopers to break a separatist blockade of Ryloth, but Ahsoka disobeys Anakin's orders and she gets a bunch of clone pilots killed. Episode uh -oh. 20 follows Obi-Wan, liberating the droid-occupied town on Ryloth. And then in episode 21, shows their eventual victory with Mace Windu, introducing us to Hera's father, the Twi'lek freedom fighter, Cham mm. Sandula. So I think these desert huh. sands are the Jigsuin desert that Mace Windu credits Obi-Wan with securing on Ryloth's Southern Hemisphere in episode 21. And since we didn't really see where Anakin and Ahsoka were for those second two episodes, I think we are seeing the events that Anakin reported to Palpatine and Yoda here. My fighters have secured control of the space around Ryloth. We have the Separatist cruisers on the run. And yes, one of these blue-plated clone troopers is Captain Rex, because the episode credits list Tamar Morrison as playing both Commander uh, and Captain Rex. Yeah, that is Rex talking to Anakin in the Twi'leks there. And yes, just a reminder that Ryloth is Hera's home world, where in Rebels, she tried to retrieve her precious family Kalakori that Jason now likely has a bead on. So part of what Jason is sensing through the world between worlds is the history that directly involved his maternal grandfather, hmm. Cham Syndulla. Young Ahsoka places her hand on this wounded clone trooper and he places his hand on hers. And you know that we're just supposed to imagine that's 2002 to wear more since based under those wrappings. But this right. isn't just Ahsoka showing her emotional attachment to these fighters. She is still feeling horrible over her decision in Storm of Ryloth that got a bunch of these guys killed. And actually the music we hear in this moment is Kevin Kiner's burying the dead music that played in the Clone Wars finale over shots hmm. of Ahsoka burying members of the 332nd. Ooh, wow. 
That show's gonna be powerful. Ahsoka asks Anakin. But our mistakes cost lives. That doesn't bother you? Of course it does. This... This isn't what I trained for. Yeah, young Ahsoka is recognizing how traumatic it was for young Jedi to transition from peacekeepers to military commanders. It's right. part of why this series tagline was Warrior, Outcast, Rebel, Jedi, which mm. we embrace with our Ahsoka-inspired Fulcrum shirt, which you can get at nerdriot.shop. It's one of the best ways to support what we're doing here in mm. New stars. And again, talks about his place in this weird legacy family tree. Look. When Obi-Wan taught me, we were keepers of the peace. This echoes yeah, what makes Windu that... worried about in Attack of the Clones. We're keepers of the peace, not soldiers. But Anakin continues, But now, to win this war, I have to teach you to be a soldier. Is that all I'll have to teach my own Padawan one day? How to fight? Do you even want a Padawan? It's fun for Anakin to acknowledge this, because Ahsoka's entire existence in Star Wars canon came from just a chat between George Lucas and Dave Filoni about whether Anakin Skywalker ever had a Padawan. George Lucas was like, yeah, yeah, he did, actually. And Anakin mm. brushes off how much he really hates being a teacher. I'm joking. How can you joke at a time like this? What would you prefer? Yes, just another mm -hmm. acknowledgement of the Clone Wars series and how Anakin and Ahsoka will often joke around in the middle of battle. Here we learn it's just how they're able to get through it. Ahsoka asks, yeah. What if I want to stop fighting? And you'll die. Now, at Ooh. this point, I don't think this is the actual transcript of the memory of Anakin talking. I don't think he ever actually said this to Ahsoka. Really, this is like Ahsoka's impression of future Vader seeping in. Because as she watches him charge off with Rex and the others, an explosion briefly Brilliant changes the silhouette scene. to that of Darth yeah. Vader. And his lightsaber goes from blue to red. It looks awesome. But right. it's not just Anakin's change. It's the fact that when he's Anakin, he's flanked by clone troopers, his brothers. But when he's Vader, the clone troopers vanish. And right. he is alone. Now, I'm pretty sure that Ahsoka's reaction here is not what young Ahsoka actually saw and did in the actual battle of Ryloth from Clone Wars. We are yeah. really back to a subjective impression of this memory, adult Ahsoka reliving this moment with the knowledge of what Anakin would become. Because really, technically, that's what memories are. We don't really remember things exactly as they happened. When we think back on a memory, we are remembering how we felt the last time we thought about that event. Every memory we have is a derivation of the last time we thought about that event. So as we get older, it's diminishing returns in a complex web of emotions as we've thought back through our life. And yes, mm. seeing Anakin mm. suddenly turning into Vader is just like the moment in the Lothal Jedi Temple in Rebels Season 2, Episode 18, where her vision of Anakin turned into a vision of Vader, and the flickering aspect of it recalls Ezra's view of Palpatine in the Rebels finale and pieces of that Lothal Jedi Temple. Now, the three mm. X-Wing pilots left after the Eye of Sion took off in Episode 4 are Carson Tiva, Lander, that's Brandon Wayne, who, along with Latif Crowder, does the physical work for the Mandalorian Din Djarin, and Jensu, played by Chow No Mova. While piloting with that photo of Kanan looking right at her, Hera says, I got us out here chasing ghosts. Yeah, mm. ghost pilot chasing ghosts. Nice wordplay. And she asks, Her Yang, where are they? People don't just vanish into thin air. Like he's well, gonna know. Normally know. Yeah, Hu Yang must know that sometimes, whether it's Obi-Wan or Yoda or Knight Brother Marok, sometimes that is just how these people go. The ghost right. skims the waves, leading to this awesome transition to the sounds of blasters and lightsabers. Okay, yeah, so now, a really well done. Older, now wielding two blue lightsabers, finds herself I in the Siege of Mandalore. I kind of thought they Mandalore, were white, but they are Wars blue. Season 7, episodes 9 through 12, which is set concurrently well, with the events right there. of Revenge of the Sith. See, by season 5, Ahsoka had begun to green. use her green lightsaber and a shorter yellow-green Shoto, both of which she lost on Coruscant at the end of season 5 during the drama with that false accusation of her bombing the Jedi Temple that led to her parting ways with the Order. So these two blue blades actually came from Anakin later on in season 7, when they reunited right before before they parted ways, Anakin to the Battle of Coruscant that we saw in Revenge of the Sith, and Ahsoka to the Siege of Mandalore that we saw in Clone Wars Season 7 in 2020, set in the city of Sundari. She was helping Bo-Katan liberate it from Maul. Again, these two events were happening at the same time, and it's why Anakin doesn't remember it, because he wasn't there. Now, Ahsoka duels with more confidence now, and Ariana Greenblatt does a really good job aging herself throughout this episode. Now she carries herself with Ahsoka's more jaded yeah. stride. I don't know what it is about her just crossing her arms as Ahsoka, or Hayden Christensen crossing his arms and looking over at Snips. It just perfectly evokes what we remember from Clone Wars. Good now, actress. The Mandalorians that she Good fights actor. have red and black armor with horned helmets. These are members of Maul's Death Watch. After mm. Maul took over that group in Season 5, killing their previous leader Pre Vizsla with a Darksaber, and even after Maul's temporary mm. capture by Sidious, this branch of the Death Watch stayed loyal to Maul and fashioned their armor to look like him. Meanwhile, the Clone Troopers did the same for Ahsoka. Part of the 501st Battalion broke off to form the new 332nd, led by Commander Rex, and they painted their helmets to evoke Ahsoka's orange yeah, and white look at that. markings. You can actually see 
see some of those helmets in the background in the scene. And we actually hear to cool. Morrison's voice as Rex. Nice work, Commander. We'll secure the perimeter. Now, as you can see, Rex didn't do the orange paint. He just kind of did the markings in blue. And if you look back at that nice. scene in Brylos, it kind of looks like they just made one helmet for Rex. That's okay. Right. We, we can we can forgive that. Now, all of this would be right before Ahsoka would run back in the mall and have her epic duel with him. And that would lead right into Order 66. So this is a pivotal moment in history where she's talking with Anakin. Okay. And Anakin says, Ahsoka, within you will be everything I am, all the knowledge I possess. Just everything I that I am. My master and he from his. We're part of a legacy. We are reminded of Ahsoka and Hu Yang's line about Ahsoka's legacy of atypical Jedi. And just remember, the links of the chain are Sabine, Ahsoka, Anakin, Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, Dooku, and Yoda. All of them pretty weird. But Anakin also <laughs> echoes what Yoda will tell Anakin's son in The Last Jedi. I think one of the most important lines in all of Star Wars. We are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. As much as I love the title mm. Shadow Warrior, and again, I'm gonna explain why at the end of this video, I think a really good implicit title of this episode would just be The Burden of All Masters. Ahsoka mm. responds, uh, But my part of that legacy is one of death and war. But you're more than that. But for Ahsoka, more means more powerful, more dangerous than anyone ever realized. But Anakin gets fed up and he says, Is that what this is about? Back to the beginning. Yes, so Anakin circles back to his words from the beginning of the lesson. Life or death. <laughs> or die. Or die. But this time, the blade is Vader red, and he faces away from her just as he initially did to Obi-Wan and Mustafar, and his eyes burn red as they did when the lava burned his flesh and the hate took over. But really there, it was the skin around his eyes that turned red, his pupils were more orangey yellow. Here right. and there, just red. Because right. something different is happening here. And Kevin Ooh. Kiner kicks in with some intense horn music. Yep, the Vader music. Yes, this is totally the soprano vocal notes from Duel of the Fates. No. Oh. Now, what is really happening here? This is not truly evil Vader taking over. This mm. is Ahsoka's subconscious projection of Anakin wearing a performative mask because he realizes what haunts Ahsoka is not her role in war's past, but really her guilt over what Anakin became after she left him. Oh. So oh. he's playing this wow. part to help Ahsoka work through this fear of a failed student-teacher relationship. Mm -hmm. Ahsoka goes for her own Palpatine lunge and Anakin catches it, disappointed. He twists her arm back and kicks her through the fog and adult Ahsoka lands back in the world between worlds. <laughs> Great transition. Beautiful. Yes, that Damn. is Vader's breathing there, and the lightning flashes to flicker him into Vader charging at her. It's like when Ezra saw Palpatine as Sidious in the Rebels finale. But really what's happening here is Anakin is saying, okay, Snips, you really need that rematch with Vader after Malachor because the fight was prematurely ended by the world between worlds, huh? Fine, I'll give you Vader. This is what you want. Let's go. Let's get it out of your system. Anakin says, you lack conviction. Yes, they did a voice effect on Ooh. Aiden's voice to make it sound like it was filtered through Vader's yeah. mask. Kind of like when we heard both Matt Lanter and James Earl Jones voice in that Malachor fight. And when they fight, Ahsoka crosses her white sabers to catch Anakin's red, forming this cool asterisk image, echoing a very similar shot in their duel on Malachor and Rebels. This duel is them finally finishing that one. And it's just kind of fun to watch this and think about how this is the Darth Vader that Palpatine wanted. And because of Obi-Wan scarring the crap out of him, Vader was forever limited to a techno-organic suit, which, hmm. don't get me wrong, looks awesome, and Star Wars would not be Star Wars without it. But let's be honest, Hayden is on fire here. Ahsoka is only able to yeah, defeat Anakin when her lightsabers cool. get knocked out of her hand, and she switches to using only evasive maneuvers and takes control of his red lightsaber. And that disarming happens off screen. It's the same exact way that Anakin disarms Dooku when they fought in front of Palpatine in Revenge of the Sith. And so we think we are headed for a beheading. Ahsoka even steps in close so that the red glows in her mm. eyes too. Here is when the hate is closest to her grasp. And what does she do? She deactivates yeah. the saber, she tosses it aside, and she says, I choose to live. Yep. She makes a different choice than Anakin made with Dooku. She chooses to live. And I love how Hayden shows that evil melting away from his face. He oh, looks down and he looks amazing. right at Ahsoka. The mask has been lifted. He's back to his good-natured mentor. He's got a smile. 
It's just another good lesson from Clone Wars era Anakin, and it's awesome. See, Balin had put Ahsoka back in a toxic headspace of thinking she was part of a cursed legacy of failed mentors. Sabine, in her eyes, was just evidence of this failure. So this lesson mm. between life and death is really Ahsoka acquiring a new perspective on mentorship to see her training not as failed, but just incomplete. It's the same right. way she sees her mentorship with Sabine now. Just as Anakin appeared in this space, he vanishes behind the same shoulder. Yeah. There's an incredible visual where one path of the world between worlds collapses in on Ahsoka's yeah. path. Forming a line of a reflective water see, surface, I've replay, noticed we that. see two mirrored Ahsokas, and Ahsoka sinks into herself. So the two polar ends of Ahsoka's consciousness yep. find each other in the middle, and finally she reaches balance. Since everything Ahsoka saw in the world between worlds was blue and fluid, now it melts back into the sea. It's just implied that Ahsoka yeah. physically envisioned this experience while floating in the ocean the entire time, as the right. force manipulated the water around her into a construct where she could work through these hmm. issues. As Ahsoka floats, her arms are outstretched in a Christ pose as we are witnessing the character undergoing a resurrection. X-Wing pilot Jensu dives in, Coast Guard style to get her, and Lander pulls her up, and we definitely hear a voice through the force saying, Ahsoka, here. Mm. Is that Anakin calling to her though? Because it kind of sounds female. Could it be Sabine? Are the oh. Master and Apprentice finally linked through the Force? While Cetos is a planet, has always been stormy up until this point. Finally, the clouds break and sunlight beams into Ahsoka to awaken her on her bunk on the T6. Now she doesn't wear her headband, so we see right. the barrier between her orange brow and her white laku. Outside, Ahsoka dons a white garment and later she fully suits up white, these same robes that she wears in the Rebels finale episode, showing how she's completed her journey into Gandalf the White. What we yeah. thought it was death was actually transformation into enlightenment. Ahsoka once again uses psychometry wow. to read the split sphere. This is Jedi Quinlan Voss's old force ability to hear a recording of recent history based on an impression it leaves on an object or a location. Mon Mothma calls in to order Hera and Ahsoka to return to Coruscant, saying the Senate Oversight Committee is going to vote on whether to suspend her command. And they pilot the T6 and the ghost directly into a pod of Purgle. And the largest one looms in right in front of Ahsoka on the wing. She loves yeah. going out on this wing. The imagery and the scale <laughs> reminds me of Paul Atreides facing the sand worm in Dune, down to the baleen. These are whales brushing your teeth. Denny yeah. Villeneuve actually used the same anatomical effect on the interior mouth of the sandworms. Whales have these as filters for the stuff that flows openly into their mouths. Carson Tava faces New Republic Mon Calamari cruisers led by Captain Gerard, played by yep. Asa Davis. Her first officer is the Ishi Tib race, which first appeared in Return of the Jedi. Carson reminds us that he's from the Adelphi base, which I'm pretty sure is that X-Wing and Y-Wing bar that we saw in The Mandalorian Season 3. Jason says, It's just like the stories you told me. How the whales took Ezra and the bad guys far, far away. Yeah. Far, far away. He describes the events of the Rebels finale using the language of the famous opening blue text of Star Wars a long time ago in a galaxy far, far wow. away. This is the first Star Wars title that's taken us from one far, far away galaxy to a completely different one. As Ahsoka uses the force to communicate with a pergil, its massive blue eye looks at her. And like Jonah in the Old Testament, and Pinocchio, and Dory, that. and Marlin, and Finding Nemo, Ahsoka yeah. and Luke reminds me of the, the Jonah. They're actually riding in the the well. on some mysterious I wonder if Eric's going to exactly wonder how many ships go East with them. Yeah. How old is that Purgle? 150, dude, and still young. Ahsoka tells Hu Yang, We'll just see where it goes. It could go anywhere. Yeah. I know. But that's better than going nowhere. This is the happiest we've seen Ahsoka on this series. Mm. She is a true Gandalf the White, having aged out of this world and eager to embark on the next great adventure west through the Grey Havens. Choir voices ring out as the Purgles swim past the New Republic cruisers. And I love how you can see the X-Wing docking bays as they float past looking so small, giving us a sense of scale compared to the people who would be in those bays. Gerard and her bridge are helpless yep. to just watch, kind of like Thrawn and the Chimera in the Rebels finale. And there is this awesome visual effect as the Alpha Purgle passes the engine of the cruiser and its <laughs> eye reflects blue. It's kind of like right. when you take a picture of a cat, it gets a laser eye effect. It's right. because it's part of the eye called the tapetum lucidum. The purgle mm. charge up, and from the other side of the baleen teeth, Ahsoka and Hu Yang see this horizontal line of light with streaks of purple in their cockpit. Mm. We do not see the stretching stars effect that we are used to seeing for hyperspace jump in Star Wars, because this version is hidden from us. Yeah. Ahsoka is only able to see it through this narrow slit, kind of like Oppenheimer watching the Trinity test through his special eye gear. Mm. It's because unlike the world between worlds, this is a trip through the heavens that mortals are not meant 
and to see the process of. So Ahsoka begins this episode in the dark with the Shadow Warrior, and she ends bathed in light. But who was the Shadow Warrior exactly? What does that really mean? Well, we are reminded of Shadow Warrior, aka Akira Kurosawa's Kage Musha, an amazing 1980 mm. film which had an international version that was executive produced by George Lucas. So in Japanese, a Kagamusha is a political decoy, someone who impersonates oh. a politician to draw attention away from the real leader who might be dead or ailing or under threat. It's exactly what Padme Amidala did with her decoys. Interesting. Or Dave in the movie Dave. So in this episode, Anakin performs the Kagamusha role, a doppelganger who gives a theatrical performance to impersonate a fallen warlord of Darth Vader. Darth Vader oh. himself, based on Kurosawa imagery, of course, so that Ahsoka can finally finish her battle with Vader and learn her final lesson. Still, mm. ultimately, a shadow, a warrior impersonating a ghost. But why do we see ghosts? Not because of the ghost's unfinished business, but because of our own. Please support mm. this channel by grabbing an wow. Ahsoka-inspired Fulcrum shirt available at nerdriot.shop. Be sure to subscribe Subscribe to the break room for episodes of WikiLeaks, our Ahsoka after show. Subscribe to all three channels of the New Rockstars Network. Big thanks to Noah Chen for helping write and research this breakdown. Follow me at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. So, so much connection to obviously to the Clone Wars. We right. were visiting events that happened during the Clone Wars. We're watching the Clone Wars right now, but we just started. Yeah. So, we haven't gotten to most of these pivotal events that right. they keep describing i can't wait to get to them because they look so stunning mm -hmm. and cool um but man i can't believe that eric didn't question whether or not other ships are going to get tangled up in the purgle and dragged along maybe it's that that's on the next episode maybe well i mean that was the only thing I could think of when that was happening. Those the Purgle were drifting through the fleet. Mm -hmm. The ghost was right there. The the three s fleet ships were right there. Right. I think one or more ships we'll see. is gonna get tangled yeah, up. Yeah, we'll see. And taken with them. Wow. Um, but yeah, again, an amazing. Uh, amazing set of explanations. Right. Um, did you pull anything in particular that amazed you out? I mean, um, we already seen it in the movie. It's just the sword fighting that was cool, and the, but, then the but, the Darth Vader to you know Anakin. That right. Was but uh, linking the specific forms of the lightsaber fights to different. Fights, fights that have happened in other times yeah. yeah that's very very cool stuff that i just wouldn't even begin to know how to do it, it's all of these things i'm the writers learning. the writers and and dave filoni they do such a good job of making this lore connect, connect. yeah and making it all rhyme with itself and and flow yeah. and you know have coherence like want to watch the whole star wars movie because when i was watching it it was the i only watched portion of that star wars movie so, of the original movies the original movies so yeah. i kind of like want to watch the whole series we'll have to set aside some time to do yeah. that because it's a great watch there's it is. there's 12 of them now and i know i've only <laughs> probably seen out of 12 probably four Oh my goodness. I would never or have five. guessed. Or five. Or just one of them. Yeah. Because okay. um, that's why I had so much questions on certain things. My nieces, who is 10 years old, seen most of them. Of course. Yeah. And and she was telling us to watch the Clone the War. Wars mm -hmm. since we started our, you know, our, our movie channel. And it's just like. She's like, you guys gotta watch, you gotta and watch. There we it. are. And then, you know, a nine year old telling you to watch it. So, <laughs> and now that, you know, we're putting the pieces together in Asuka, that's gonna neat. You know, you just wanna go back to it and yeah. re watch it. I wish we had started Clone Wars much earlier <laughs> so that we could be f further along and know all this stuff already. Well, but if we would have listened to a nine year old, <laughs> and she's gonna say, I told you so, you should have watched it before. Yeah. But you know what? It's too late now. It's been a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, thank you again for tuning into our channel. Don't forget to give you love and support to new rock stars. The link will be in our description below. Thank you for loving our show channel and liking our videos to get the algorithm going. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Thank you again and see, see you in the, the next, next video. video.